And on the line with us is Michael Mann, the Distinguished Professor of Meteorology and the Director of the Earth Science System uh, at uh, Center at Penn State University, author of the new book, The Madhouse Effect, How Climate Change Denial is Threatening Our Planet, Destroying Our Politics, and Driving Us Crazy. Actually, uh, co-author of the book, along with, along with uh, Tom Tolles, and in fact, I'm grabbing the book here. Uh, Professor Mann, welcome back. Uh, thanks, Tom. Always good to be with you. Great to have you with us. I wanted to wave the book around here in front of the camera and say, uh, right. it's, this, is, this is great. So uh, tell us about the, the I, I, I understand that we just had the hottest July in the history of recorded measurement and possibly since humans evolved 165,000 years ago. Well, is that the case? Uh, yeah, that is distinctly possible. Obviously, we don't have detailed thermometer measurements that go back hundreds of thousands of years. We have to uh, resort to indirect measures that we call proxy data, like uh, ice cores and tree rings and other sorts of natural archives. But we certainly have an extremely reliable thermometer record of global temperatures going back uh, more than a century. And not only was this the warmest July on record, it was the warmest month on record. And why can we say that? Well, globally, July is the warmest month of the year. Uh, and that's because the Northern Hemisphere uh, heats up more during its summer than the Southern Hemisphere, which is mostly ocean, cools down during its winter. So uh, you tend to lean towards uh, the season of, that the Northern Hemisphere is having. Uh, Northern Hemisphere winter is the coldest uh, time of the year for the globe. Northern Hemisphere summer and July specifically is the warmest time of the year for the globe. And this was the warmest July on record. That means it was the warmest month on record. Uh, and that's during a year which is on uh, course to set a new uh, record for the warmest year after we had set that record last year, a year after we had set it the previous year. That's three global temperature records in a row. Uh, I don't know how many ways we can look at this problem uh, and not come to the conclusion that we are seeing uh, profound impacts of climate change now in a way that, I, as I like to say, uh, the impacts are no longer subtle. Uh, we see them playing out uh, in the 24-hour news cycle, uh, we see it playing out in headlines like this latest headline, warmest month on record. Yeah. The, uh, last night, Louise and I were sitting uh, around the marina talking to some friends of ours uh, who had just been out sailing and some mutual friends of ours, David and Candy, uh, just took a sailboat up to uh, they're on the north end of um, Iceland right now, I think. And uh, they're on their way to Europe. And they're like, the people there have never seen them. You know, it's like things are melting that have never melted before. It's just, it's, it, it, the, the world, particularly in the northern part of the world, is agog. Uh, we've got these massive fires now starting to burn in the northern parts of Siberia, not to mention, I mean, the obvious stuff that's going on here in the United States, California. Whatnot. California, yeah. And, and, and we keep hitting, it seems like at least once a week, we're having a thousand year weather event <laughs> In the, in the red states, in, in Texas, Louisiana, Alabama, you know, uh, Arkansas, whatnot. Um, right now, Mississippi underwater. Uh, is, this the new, is this the new normal or is this the beginning of some sort of terrible transition? Yeah, and, and you know, for your uh, listeners, when we say a thousand year event, we mean that based on the statistics of the weather, an event like this should not happen more often than once in a thousand years. And so when we see thousand year events popping up all over the place, uh, we have had multiple thousand year rainfall events in the U.S. Uh, this last year, as you note, and the most recent of them being Louisiana, uh, it really, uh, it's unlike anything we've seen. And when you talk to people who live there, who have seen it firsthand, um, they don't know what's happening. They know that something strange is happening with our weather because they've never seen anything like that before. And it turns out that their experience and their intuitive sense that there's something wrong, that this is unprecedented, actually is grounded in really basic physical science. One of the easiest predictions when it comes to climate change is that a warmer atmosphere 
can hold more moisture. There's a basic relationship of thermodynamics that tells us that. In fact, it's, it's exponential. Uh, the more you warm, the, the faster you put uh, moisture into the atmosphere. And what that means is that when you have record temperatures or near record temperatures down in the Gulf of Mexico like we have right now, there's a lot more moisture in the air in that region. And this storm was spinning, uh, taking all that moisture and turning it into record rainfall. Uh, and, you know, it's not an isolated event. Uh, as you note, we've seen thousand year rainfall events now this year in South Carolina, in Texas, in Arizona, um, and many other states uh, that I'm probably forgetting right now. Mm. So, so is this? West Virginia. I yeah, West, West Virginia. Virginia. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was a big one. So, so, you know, should we just kind of plan on hunkering down and and i mean the new thing that's going to be the the most destructive thing going on in the united states and probably around the world is is flash floods basically because the atmosphere has uh correct me if i'm wrong i think it's five percent more moisture than it did when reagan was sworn into office and yep. and some exponent of that five percent uh you know that means not five percent more rain that means 50 percent more rain or 100 percent more rain or what you know what is yeah, and 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 how much worse can it get, and how quickly do you expect it to get worse if it's going to? Yeah, and so you allude to something very important, which is you can have a modest increase, say, in the percent of moisture in the atmosphere, say, you know, on average six percent due to the warming that's already taken place, and yet that translates to a really remarkable um, change in the frequency of extreme events. Uh, where even a modest increase of, uh, you know, 6% uh, in the moisture in the atmosphere means that what used to be, say, a thousand-year rainfall event, something that given the past statistics of the weather should only happen once every thousand years on average, now we expect to happen, well, maybe once every three years. And the problem, you know, sometimes people say, well, okay, there's a new normal. We just need to deal with this new normal. Uh, the problem is it isn't even that simple. It, 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 we don't get off that easily. There will be no new normal because as we continue to pump these greenhouse gases into the atmosphere and warm the atmosphere more, there's more and more moisture. And so what was a thousand year event becomes a two year event and pretty soon a one year event pretty soon. You continue on that course in a matter of decades, it happens multiple times over the course of a typical summer. Uh, and we keep on moving in that direction. Um, headed towards ever more dangerous climate changes. Uh, it isn't like it stops somewhere and creates a new normal. Uh, the new normal of today, uh, you know, will be, you know, the, 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 what's typical today uh, uh, will, you know, in terms of uh, the maximum heat that we see during the summer, um, uh, pretty soon, a few decades from now, uh, you will be seeing events that today we would call unprecedented, extreme, uh, record, those sorts of events will, you know, happen many times over the course of a summer. And then, you know, if we continue in that direction, uh, there will be events that take place where we have no analog. There's nothing we can possibly point to in the past and say the future will be like that because we are creating a no analog planet. Wow. And, and with, cold in the winter. It's the same thing, is it not? Because of the jet stream falling apart? So that's really interesting. And, and there's we, some we just had about a half doing. a minute. I'm sorry. But, yeah. But. So there's some, that's a little more complicated because you'd say, okay, well, there should be less extreme cold, right? Uh, more extreme heat, less extreme cold as we warm up the planet. Turns out it's not that simple because the variability might increase. The extremes might increase in both directions. And there's some solid science now suggesting that possibility. Wow. And, and uh, certainly last winter convinced me. <laughs> Dr. Michael Mann, professor, distinguished professor of meteorology and the director of the Earth Science System Center at Penn State University, author of the new book, The Madhouse Effect. This is a brilliant, brilliant book, Michael. It's just great. Thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you, Tom.